Tonight I want to turn to a personal note, if I may, and address a matter that has raised some curiosity. This will be my last broadcast here on CNN, where I've worked for most of the past 30 years, and where I have many friends and colleagues whom I admire deeply and respect greatly. I'm the last of the original anchors here on CNN, and I'm proud to have had the privilege of helping to build the world's first news network. I'm grateful for the many opportunities that CNN has given me over these many years. I've tried to reciprocate with the full measure of my ability and my energy. Over the past six months, it's become increasingly clear that strong winds of change have begun buffeting this country and affecting all of us. And some leaders in media, politics, and business have been urging me to go beyond the role here at CNN and to engage in constructive problem solving, as well as to contribute positively to a better understanding of the great issues of our day, and to continue to do so in the most honest and direct language possible. I've talked extensively with Jonathan Klein. John's the president of CNN, and as a result of those talks, John and I have agreed to a release from my contract that will enable me to pursue new opportunities. At this point, I'm considering a number of options and directions, and I assure you I will let you know when I set my course. I truly believe that the major issues of our time include the growth of our middle class, the creation of more jobs, health care, immigration policy, the environment, climate change, and our military involvement, of course, in Afghanistan and Iraq. But each of those issues is, in my opinion, informed by our capacity to demonstrate strong resilience of our now weakened capitalist economy and demonstrate the political will to overcome the lack of true representation in Washington, D.C. I believe these to be profoundly, critically important issues, and I will continue to strive to deal honestly and straightforwardly with those issues in the future. Unfortunately, these issues are now defined in the public arena by partisanship and ideology rather than by rigorous, empirical thought and forthright analysis and discussion. I'll be working diligently to change that as best I can. And as for the important work of restoring inspiration to our great free society and our market economy, I will strive as well to be a leader in that national conversation. It's been my great honor to work with each and every person at this wonderful network. I will be eternally grateful to CNN, to Ted Turner, and to all of my colleagues and friends, and of course, to you at home. I thank you, and may God bless you. The news continues for the rest of this hour, and I'll be right back after this. Joining me now, DeRoy Murdoch. He is syndicated columnist for uh, Scripps Howard News Service. Great to have you with us. And Errol Lewis, columnist, New York Daily News, CNN contributor. Great to see you. And Hank Scheinkopf, Democratic strategist, CNN contributor. Great Thank to you see will. you. Good to see you. Well, let's, uh, let's turn to uh, first uh, the Fort Hood murders. Uh, there's great uh, agitation uh, in some quarters of the national media as to whether or not this is terrorism. Uh, and the fact that uh, uh, the media has done something of a disservice uh, to fallen soldiers. What's your reaction? Uh, one lunatic with a weapon who had an opportunity, and it's a great tragedy, and my heart goes out to those great fighting men and women who lost their lives. That's it. Yeah, you know, I've talked to some veterans, and they say that, um, you know, it, it's generally known that if somebody is under that much stress, if they want to take themselves out of combat, if they're afraid to go into a theater of operations, they shoot off a toe, they pick a fight. This is an outlier. This is a, an atrocity. And to see the mayor of Chicago and others try to sort of sneak in other kinds of political agendas or to medicalize the whole thing as if this is part of some, some great problem of stress that also deals, uh, uh, results in suicides and so forth is a real disservice. I mean, it prevents us from getting at the facts. And we have to keep in mind, this is a guy who, if he survives, is going to be put on trial, a military court-martial. So he has rights that have to be respected. And so all of the speculation ends up being, I, I think, uh, just kind of a waste of time. I think we will get to the truth of it when it goes to court. Some people shouldn't think about it, talk about it, ask about it, speculate about it. Uh, I think the speculation is, is, is just plain harmful. I mean, a group that says all Muslims should be ki kicked out of the military. I mean, I think that's just crazy. What the fact said that? 
uh, American Family Association, I believe. Charming yeah. people. Yeah. I don't Charming. know who they are. <laughs> Lovers of humanity. You know, they I want to bring know. us together. But who are they? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> well, I think we have to have our eyes open about this. I mean, I have no doubt this man was under stress and may have had mental problems. But beyond that, he was in contact with, uh, with a pro-Al-Qaeda imam overseas. He apparently made a statement, uh, I'm a Muslim first and American second. He had this slideshow with other members of the military where he showed a slide that said, we love death more than you love life. So there's another dimension to this that has to be focused on. And I think if we close our eyes to this, we look away at maybe the next person who pulls another, uh, another uh, tragic attack like this. I think we have, that this is part of the story. This needs to be part of the discussion. I, I have to ask you, when did we start this stuff? We don't speculate. We don't discuss. We don't think. We don't examine. We don't apply our intellects. I just heard the President of the United States say this about Fort Hood. Mother of God, what kind of country are we? This is not a court of law. This is a nation of, in, uh, of energetic, intelligent people. 300 million of us, and we're supposed to suspend our brains? What's going on here, Hank? Well, I don't think we ought to suspend our brains, but the, you know, the, the discussion of whether this guy was nuts is not a discussion. The fact that he has to go to trial should he survive his wounds, that's for sure. The fact that we have a lot of dead people, that's also for sure. We just witnessed the execution of another mass murderer just yesterday, mm. Mr. Muhammad, who has uh, gone to uh, whatever destination is determined for him. Um, we, didn't, we talked about that a good deal, too. Was this the act of a crazy person, or is this about gun control? It's about a little of everything, but this is the act of a crazy person. No question about it. And whether he was in touch with this imam or that imam, the danger is that we begin segregating people by a religion or skin color again to protect well, our... Well, but there's a, unfortunately there's another danger, which is that there were other soldiers who heard, heard mm -hmm. him say things of a jihadist nature. And they didn't come forward because they were afraid they would be, would be reprimanded or they'd oh, be ostracized. Minute, that, 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 and so they stayed quiet. This is the kind of speculation. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the kind of... Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the kind of... Sooner, and 13 this is the kind people of, dead now might be alive. This is the kind of speculation talking about that doesn't make any sense. Now, you're you're saying that there are people, you know who they are and you know why they didn't speak up. You've conducted your own investigation. Well, I've seen news reports, as we all have, and there are a number of soldiers who said they wanted to speak out about this, but they did not because they were afraid they'd be reprimanded because, because, the, because, because they would be because, because, they, because, they, they, because they thought they'd be reprimanded. Yeah. 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 You've asked for testimony. I'm going to offer you testimony. Okay? Uh, let me offer you testimony. I spoke with a doctor in a classroom with Major Hassan who said straightforwardly that he and other members of that class were horrified at some of his statements and they uh, complained to the administration and they did so at some risk because it is quite well known, according to the doctor, that they will have uh, a, a one e equal opportunity complaint can destroy a career and that that stigma hangs over. Brian Todd tonight on this very broadcast reported on that issue, Errol. I mean, this is not a matter of rank speculation. It is a report of the, of the extent paranoia See? and political correctness within the United States Army. Well, so, so DeRoy just said people lost their lives because people were too hesitant to, to call out what they saw and in front of them. To the and, and, talks directly to and, them. And, and <laughs> I, I, I just, I mean, I, 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 what I, what I, first of all, I don't think there's any basis to, to draw that conclusion. But secondly, when you hear things like he shouted Allah Akbar before the, 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 the massacre witness began. Witness witness said that. Uh, well, no, some witnesses said that. At least one general said that there was speculation. It is not clear what happened. Mm -hmm. It is simply not clear what happened. Wait, now, been to, you can, you can, I, I you can take, uh, as Mayor Daley did on his own political agenda, you can take your political agenda, grab a couple of facts that seem to match it, well, and, then, and, and then you're off to the... Look, we've been told agenda. throughout this war entire that we, if you see something, say something. Don't keep right. it to yourself. And I think there are people who are keeping things themselves because they're afraid if they'll open their mouths, as you say, some equal well, employment uh, opportunity officer will come after him. All of a sudden, you're racist, you're anti-Muslim. I'm not saying that every time someone opens a Quran, you should call uh, call 911. But if you have someone making these sorts of statements, I think it's appropriate to come forward and say, look, keep an eye on this guy or else. And, and now we see what there, else was. Isn't there a condescending, patronizing view here that the American people are such, uh, such ignoramuses, such fools, such in insensible uh, animals that they can't make a distinction between a radical Islamist terrorist and an American citizen who practices the Muslim faith? I mean, what kind? Isn't there some political correctness that would, uh, would keep us from being offended by such an insult, by our leaders, uh, by the power structure? Mm -hmm. I would hope. Well, Lou, you're on to something. It's called staying on message. We watch politicians do it, therefore the population is supposed to. I think the military ought to be held to a different standard in this matter. I think because the stakes are higher. 
an Army CID ought to be... Ought to First, let's go back to staying yeah. the message. I don't understand what you said. The message is that everybody should not be complaining about it. Whatever the administration does should be respected and, and, and thought to be wonderful, and what they say is fine and okay. That's the message, yeah, and you're supposed to stay on that message. But people are not doing that. And when you deviate from that message, there must be something wrong with you. That's a different issue, and we're experiencing that a lot in public life. That's true. And that's, what you're, that's kind of what you're alluding to, I think. I, I'm, I'm saying to you that one of the great characteristics of a great people, the American people, is our, our historic ability to be straightforward, mm -hmm. plain spoken, say what we mean and it. mean what we say. We are we're losing that. it, mm -hmm. not by accident. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Good thank to have you. you with us. Errol, we'll talk later. <laughs> thank, thank you for you. everything. All you these years. Thank you. Appreciate it, appreciate it gentlemen. All the best. And a reminder to join me on the radio Monday through Fridays for the Lou Dobbs Show, 2 to 4 p.m. each afternoon on WFI.